I have a feeling this could turn into one of those exceptionally boring um, videos where you probably wish you was eating your left leg rather than watching this, but this is about yeast. Uh, these things are bloody expensive. Um, anywhere between, I don't know, six and nine quid each. So being Yorkshire, what I've done is I've started a little yeast bank. Um, and what this is, I'll just show you some of the blanks. This is um, an agar gel and um, sort of a very lightweight wort. Uh, just a, a kind of like a malted, dry malt. And uh, it forms what's called a slant. And I'm not going to say too much about it because I'll post a link to a video from Richard Williams, Dude's Brews, underneath, uh, about this. Um, so that's the basic slant. Then you inoculate them. I have got a loop up here. Uh, and then you grow the yeast. Let me show you on one of these. You grow the yeast on the substrate there and then I've just put like a mineral oil I think this is a glycerin vegetable based glycerin and that should then store it forever other times what I'll do is I'll just keep a little bit of the yeast out of the packet and at other times I'll make a very small yeast starter and then just chuck it in the fridge if I'm going to use that within the next sort of three or four weeks so that's the bank. In order then to uh, revitalize these, you take a, um, an inoculation loop and you take a tiny amount of that. You don't need much. And you put it into a small flask and uh, gradually grow it into a large, a couple of two litre or so starter. Right, let's have a look at uh, a starter I've just put on. Here's one that I uh, started today, and it was from a sample of Conan yeast, which was just in one of those sample tubes, a little bit like the mixed up one. It wasn't a slant. It was like a little bit of a, a, a one that was saved with uh, from like a little bit of wort starter like this. I might, you know, at the end of this, I might pour a little bit of this into that um, a sterilized sample tube. Now, I'm actually videoing this on a time lapse this is a small corner of my office that um i generally don't tend to use much these days so i can set all this up and i'm setting this up now to take one image every 40 seconds so next i'm going to switch over to a time lapse uh, previously done and this is the um, Y yeast 1056 and uh, you'll see how um, the yeast responds to the difference in temperature if you have a look at the little thermometer down there on the bottom left now uh, the crucial thing I found with this really is to try and keep the temperature stable unfortunately the air conditioning in my office there is broken and uh, the temperature fluctuates quite a lot I right, switch over to recording uh, the audio track over the top of this time lapse now as you can see the temperature is up to 23 in a bit and it's like a volcano however if you look at the clock on the left you'll see that this is speeded up quite a lot this is where i put the second starter in and then accidentally turned the office light off like a twat but you can still see that starter on the right has actually now overflowed and is still beautifully overflowing it is like a volcano it's beautiful uh, and you can just see now the yeast on the left, which is a Y yeast 1318 uh, for a New England IPA. Uh, that is now starting to do the same thing. The one on the right now is dying down because it's reached its uh, 
peak Krausen. So that's sort of really about where I will now sort of let that settle and pitch it. Unfortunately, I had other things to do. So uh, I just left it there going. The one on the left now is really taking off. I didn't forget, uh, or I didn't um, you know, forget that I needed to leave the light on. So I uh, let this keep going um, for another day and a bit. And this is where it's about to start to overflow itself. It's a beautiful thing watching this on um, on the time lapse. It's, it's almost it's quite um, hypnotic. The one on the right now, you'll see that where it overflowed there uh, at the top of the flask is now dried out. Um, now, if this was in a sterile environment, you could actually harvest that as dried yeast, but it's not a sterile environment. It's a manky old office, and you can see the um, the one on the left now. It's about to it's about to erupt as that temperature creeps up. It's far, far too high that it would be much nicer to have a, a steady uh, and and um, and an environment that was more stable than this. Right, so these are those two starters. I've I've now pitched um, both of these and uh, and they you know, in the fermenter they are going like a, a steam train. Um, Again, there's another video from Dudes Brews, Richard Williams, which explains why it's necessary to make a starter. So this kind of, for me now, this is like a normal practice, a part of my brewing uh, workflow, if you like, that I will um, store yeast. So obviously the Great Yorkshire way, I won't have to keep buying it. But also, um, you know, I will increase the volume of a, a, a new pack of yeast by three or four times uh, to get the best possible pitching rate. I'll put a link to Richard's um, uh, uh, video underneath. This yeast has now settled out. I've turned the stir plate off, it's settled, and it's both are now ready for pitching. That's about it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please think about subscribing uh, to the channel. Right, for now, that's it.